This video will be quick and to the point. I'm just going to teach you some basic principles of what I believe makes a good prototype, walk you through what my steps for making a prototype for my most recent game were, and show off a few assets that might help with prototyping, and then go over how to iterate and move on from prototyping. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity for the Dev Days of Summer Sale, which I'll talk about more later. So let's get into it. So I just had three basic principles to list. These aren't anything scientific or sourced from anywhere. These are just three things that I think are important to always keep in mind as you're developing your prototype. Number one, write it all down. So for the first one, it's pretty simple. I recommend writing and sketching out everything before you code or draw it. Game design is a process of mixing together a bunch of systems and cycles in order to make something abstract, fun. So I personally say that the main thing that you should have in mind whenever designing a system, for instance, in my game, which I'm working on right now, Myth Dash, I want the player to feel three main levels of intensity, so to speak, during the game. A complete lack of challenging difficulty in shops is a reward and a break. Secondly, a pressure to avoid damage and kill enemies fast in battle scenes. And finally, a fight for your life in the boss fights. So I made systems like having the battle scenes have a combo meter where you have to quickly kill enemies in order to keep it high and make money, and I also bounce the boss to be harder than the normal enemy encounters. Secondly, don't rush the process, rush the prototyping. So for this one, all I mean is that whenever planning out your game, it's impossible to rush finding the fun. You may find a combination of ideas that are fun right away, or maybe it'll take a dozen different tries of a hundred different ideas before you find something that really gets the feeling that you want, but you can't shortcut this. However, early on in development, you can shortcut making the actual game. Use the worst programmer art known to man. Recycle code from other projects, use assets, take shortcuts. All that matters is getting your ideas into reality and figuring out if they can to work. I will note that if you do this, it's probably a good idea to start a new Unity or whatever game engine that you're using project from scratch whenever you have an idea that works to give you time to build a good foundation for later development. And third, try weird things, then kill your darlings. The final rule for prototyping I have are two principles that balance each other out. Weird ideas are how unique and uniquely marketable. Games are made. Go ahead and add tax evasion mechanics to your roguelike Sekiro inspired Gundam game, or make a farming simulator set over the course of billions of years ending with the death of the last star. Just remember to make sure your game doesn't get too convoluted. Even if it's a really good idea, it might not fit into your current game and that's okay. You just need to kill it and move on. So now I'm just going to go over what my first few steps were for making my indie roguelike Myth Dash and how these principles relate. And this prototyping began far before the first day of actual development. As I was thinking about and writing down what sort of game I wanted to make and what systems I wanted to develop first and foremost. As an indie developer who is doing this more or less as a hobby, I think that it makes sense to think about what you actually enjoy doing in development. I like drawing and animating little goofy enemies, designing interesting items, and for some reason, I really like making frameworks for things like status effects and stats. So I decided to make a roguelike with stacking items, funny little enemies, and a bunch of mythology stuff. I always write down my stuff in a few different ways in a few different places. I use a basic notebook for planning out systems, contents, drawings, and anything else that I want to jot down. And I also use the website Trello to organize my task and overall development plan. And Google Docs is where I log all my development, although that's mostly for my devlogs. Admittedly, I didn't totally follow my second rule, as I put in a decent amount of extra time early on in development to add a bunch of game feel to my game. Screen shakes, impact frames, particles, I put them all in, and I have no regrets. So yeah, I guess the fourth secret rule is to ignore all the previous rules if you really want to. You probably know best for your game. These aren't hard and fast laws. However, related to the second rule, I did use a pre-made platformer controller for the game, as I really wanted that aspect to feel good and felt no reason to reinvent the wheel. Some people disagree with my choice to do that, and honestly, if you want to make your game from scratch or without assets or whatever restrictions you want, then feel free. Restrictions do often lead to innovation, but for this project, I just want to make a good game. And while I'm not about to use a pre-built project or anything, this platformer controller is a lot better than anything I could have made in a similar time, so it makes my game better. Simple as that. Finally, the third rule. Once again, this doesn't apply to my latest game as much as the previous one, simply because I wanted this game to be pretty simple. I just want a good feeling core game loop of battle and a solid roguelike progression structure. But for my previous project, Project Seaborn, which is currently on hold, I was always adding and removing whatever features and ideas I had, as I wanted to make a very unique hybrid between turn-based and action RPGs. For example, I added a combo system inspired by Ultra Kill, but ended up removing it, as it kind of overcomplicated the core gameplay. And while I do advocate trying lots of systems in prototyping mode, be careful about how many you choose to keep, and also if you have any ideas for things to add later on in development, then by all means, go ahead and try them out. 
but always be aware of scope creep. You don't want to end up never finishing your game just because you wanted to simulate fish evolution mechanics for a completely optional fishing minigame. Some things are just going to be outside the scope of your game, and especially if you're a one-man team like me, then you should probably limit yourself pretty often. Throughout all stages of prototyping, there is something that you should be always doing. Playtesting. You should playtest it yourself, and especially have others playtest it. With each new feature and mechanic, drag one of your friends or enemies in front of a computer and then have them play the game. While online playtesting with written or recorded feedback is good, I personally do like watching someone play the game and gauging their reactions to things in the game, as well as where they get stuck or what bugs they find. Okay, and this video is sponsored by Unity, and the dev days of summer sales occurring right now. It's running from July 24th, 2024, ending August 21st, 2024. There are hundreds of assets that are discounted for 50% or more, and you can grab them using the link in the description. For this video, I've chosen 10 assets that have been useful for me not only in everyday development, but are especially well suited for prototyping. Starting off with the asset Feel. I use it everywhere. It's my go-to for creating good game feel with screen shake, rumble, sound effects, and more. And it's all packaged together into a great and easy to use toolset. Second up is Behavior Designer. And this is a unique asset that is great for designing boss fights and other AI behaviors. You can easily visualize and modify behaviors for any sort of enemy. And there's a lot of great documentation and tutorials online for it. Universal Sound Effects is a big pack of sounds for just about anything you can think of, and this is great for prototyping. Is you can easily add placeholder sounds to your game. And with a few little adjustments, these sounds can be modified to fit your final game. FPS Animation Framework is just a very highly featured and polished first-person movement and shooting system. It's the sort of system that I wish I had used for my FPS game Couch Combat as it would have saved so much time, and is great for prototyping FPS games. Text Animator is a very fun to use tool that allows you to animate any text in your game, making it pop up for dialogue, shake, wiggle, and change color. It's great for adding a bit of style to your menus and dialogue. Doozy UI Manager is great for making UI, especially in menu-heavy games. It lets you build, animate, and assure that everything flows together. Odin Inspector is the first thing that I load into any Unity project. It's great for organizing your inspectors for scripts, and also creating custom editor windows. And the Serializer also provides a flexible solution for implementing saving into your game. Odin Validator, on the other hand, is a debug tool that allows you to quickly debug code, shaders, and more, as well as design and implement quick fixes through its UI. DotTween Pro is a twinning library that works with animating game objects, moving along paths, and more and it works great both in c -sharp and its own simple visual scripting language. Finally, All-in-One VFX Toolkit is a toolkit that provides all that you need for making 3D particle effects quickly. It's got lots of pre-made effects, as well as the tools to customize and make them your own. So finally, how do you stop prototyping and start typing? Well, whenever you have a game that feels like it's solid, with some core mechanics that you're confident in, and a bit of content in place to test those systems, and you've also gathered feedback and playtested, it's time to make some plans. I like to lay out a very vague, multi-step plan on my game's future development in Trello, thinking all about all the mechanics and concepts that I want to have in the final game, and what it will take to get this final shipped project. Now, just know this plan will be very wrong. Very, very wrong. And any days that you try to assign to it will also be very, very, very wrong. It's just the nature of game development. You can change your plan later, but now you have an idea of what to do next, so you can do it. I'd also recommend you to add some game juice at around this stage if you haven't already. Even if your game has placeholder art, adding some nice flashes and shakes makes the primal areas of your brain light up. It's a big part of what makes a game feel good to play, so go inject some stimulation into your game. It usually doesn't take too much time. Anyways, that's all for this video. If you have any questions over game development or prototyping, then just ask them in the comments. I'll try to get to all questions. Please subscribe for more game development videos, and check out my devlogs if my games sound interesting. Finally, thanks again to Unity for sponsoring this video, and be sure to use my link in the description to get 50% off hundreds of assets in the Game Devs of Summer Sale, running until August 21st, 2024. Thanks for watching. Bye.